Hi, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Palma Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. My name is Ria. I am your host, and I would love to welcome the lovely Norma Therese all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. How are you? Hey, Ria. I'm great, thanks. How are you doing? You know, as you can see, I am carrying my correct accoutrement, which is my mask. And, um, of course, uh, I need that uh, to protect myself and everybody else around me. And the reason I'm here at Pier 66 is because uh, my latest job in the yachting industry, which uh, is so interesting that there's so many different things you can do, is I'm working with the, um, the owners and the captain of the fine yacht Abrachi, which is the Navy, Navy blue boat behind me. You can see 55 meter Heeson, and we've developed a really robust uh, hygiene program uh, for myself and the crew. And I am delivering hot meals to the crew five days a week, which is really fantastic um, to be part of a program where the owner is so carefully um, taking care of his crew, supporting his crew, and um, it's a lot of fun too, back to my roots. Good for you. Well, so are they in quarantine then on their boat? Yeah, they are. They've got seven crew people. They've got an eighth person, um, but he is off the boat right now, and um, they don't have a chef, and I, I was actually looking for a chef for them. You know, I do uh, independent crew consultation, and, um, and so the captain who's known me for a really long time said, you know, he and the owner would really like to offer me to do that. And as I said, it's been really great. And I think the crew really appreciates it. We all know that uh, good food is one of the great uh, motivating factors um, on a yacht when you're working on a yacht. And um, so, you know, to be part of that, that um, is something that's really, really great. In today's world, we're hearing a lot of stories of crew being let go and other really bad situations. So, um, you know, this is an example of how owners can um, continue to, um, you know, uh, support and take care of their crew, which is so important. And by the way, the yacht looks fantastic. <laughs> I can imagine they've got a lot of time to clean, that's for sure. Exactly. Hey, listen, you might be interested in some stories of a couple of other vessels that are right here. Um, I think you can see maybe off in the distance a vessel that's called a Jean Machine. And uh, you may have read in the newspaper, uh, the owner of that yacht who is sheltering aboard um, is one of the leaders in um, trying to find a solution uh, for this uh, yes. pandemic, um, working through gene therapy, so that's G-E-N-E -E therapy. And, um, and so right here at Pier 66 in Fort Lauderdale, you can see that uh, um, you know the yachting world is still doing its best to contribute. Uh, interested to see some beautiful boats. Uh, take a look uh, behind me here. Uh, this wow. just pulled in a couple of days ago. That is a, a Perini Navi motor yacht. You know, we don't see a whole lot of them. Nautilus is the name of it. On the far side here, I, I'm not sure if you can see it, a dream boat uh, we got there. There's Jean Machine, Abracci, and just over here in uh, the far end, um, that uh, large uh, cream-colored vessel is called Azteca. Um, my captain, uh, Rafael uh, Cervantes del Metaix, runs that boat, and he's a really great guy. Um, he is uh, married to the fantastic uh, Captain Vicky Mellish, and they live um, a few blocks away, but also the way that he is commuting home now um, is by paddling because they live on the water. So um, I think that's a great commute and a really nice, healthy way to get your exercise during, um, you know, the quarantine that we're all experiencing. Um, as Tekka told me the day that they arrived, um, I was surprised to see that a, a large boat was able to arrive. This was about maybe two weeks ago. And they said uh, that they had been in full touch with the U.S. government and they had done um, two weeks at sea plus an extra a few days of quarantine uh, just offshore here at Fort Lauderdale before they were allowed to legally pull in, um, of course, uh, you know, having cleansed themselves of COVID-19 during the crossing. So uh, that's another great uh, local story at Pier 66. How is the feeling there right now? Is everybody feeling really upbeat and hopeful that, you know, things are going to pick up shortly? Um, you know, that's, that's, of course, you know, a valid question. Um, you know, the United States is, is really fighting a battle here. Um, of course, we have a very large population of about 350 million people, but nevertheless, we are the leaders, unfortunately, in um, infections and, in fact, in deaths. Um, here in Broward County, we have a particular issue, and that is that um, the, the very large uh, Port Everglades is um, one of the largest uh, cruise ship home bases in the world, and they are still allowing cruise ships to come in. 
Um, I have to drive over the 17th Street Bridge every day when I come to deliver my food to the great crew of Abracci. Maybe the great food to the great crew of Abracci. I hope so. And um, <laughs> so I'm able to see these cruise ships. And, um, you know, the Van Zam was here last week, which you may have heard about, that uh, had over 200 infected people. That was a big battle to get them in, but they were allowed in. And today there's still another cruise ship in Port Everglades. And, and uh, you know, I mean, I don't care how much care and attention they give it's always a risk and it's a risk to um, not only our local population, but just like every place else, a risk to our economy. And I think the yachting industry is really, really suffering. Um, charter is, you know, basically dead, I think probably for the rest of the season. Uh, yacht sales, um, of course, have been down. Uh, everybody's working from home. Um, but a lot of the really good companies, I've seen some amazing um, correspondence and care and attention given by several companies. Uh, one of the ones that has had the most impressive um, corporate uh, outreach um, and professionalism was Hill Robinson. Um, of course, you know, they're really tops. And a lot of their people, they've got offices as far flung as um, Australia and Palma and here in Fort Lauderdale, in addition to their base in Monaco. Um, so they're used to that. And so I think that they had a really seamless approach. But their messaging has been really good. Um, and, um, you know, unfortunately, all the marinas are busy as they can be because the yachts can't travel. You know, there's a ban on recreational use of vessels here, as it probably is where you are in Palma. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the vessels, so trying to find a place that you can bring a yacht is a good thing. So there's pockets of activity, I guess, that are good. And, um, you know, we're hoping that it's going to uh, start to pick up again very soon. But um, as you know, and as I know very well, the yachting industry is extremely resilient. And um, I certainly hope um, that we can rebound from this. Um, you know, we survived 2008 or 2008, yeah. and hopefully we can do that again uh, with uh, COVID-19. Well, you know what? I have to say the, the yachting industry straight across the board, everyone is extremely positive. They're very hardworking people, um, and they all have a very, very positive attitude. So I am really sure that it's, once this is eradicated, as the human race goes, the yachting industry will bounce back and bounce back. Well, exactly. I certainly sense. hope it doesn't mean the eradication of the human race, and I certainly doubt that. Well, no. <laughs> um, but, you know, certainly, as you know, um, crew, crew welfare, captain and crew, everything that concerns them is always my number one priority in terms of my personal business and my personal outreach. And I've been devastated to hear about the... Uh, amount of mass firings that have gone on, crew being abandoned in places, um, not just in the yachting business, but uh, apparently there's something like 90,000 crew people aboard cruise ships floating around the world that yeah. haven't yet been allowed to come into Fort Lauderdale and, and other ports of entry. So, um, you know, this is a major thing. And of course, you know, crew people cannot participate in um, training currently. So if you're looking to enter the business, you know, you're not going to be able to get your SCCW or your ENG1 or any of the other required licenses. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to take a little bit of time. And um, on a positive note, I hope it'll make crew people value their jobs more and, um, you know, understand how important they are and um, what a beautiful thing it is um, to work in the yachting industry. Uh, I certainly have always thought so. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, Norma, you are sort of one of the experts in, in yachting. Um, what would you suggest to people that have lost their jobs and not been repatriated and, and don't know where? Who can they get a hold of if they're in need of help? Depends on where you are. You know, um, uh, repatriation and so on, as you know, is one of the major um, rights of mariners. And so I certainly hope that there is not a large population of crew people that are going through that. Um, and of course, uh, you need to talk to uh, maritime attorneys and depending on where you are, um, there's there's a lot of leading ones. Um, here in Fort Lauderdale and in Miami, we have, we have a ton of them that are really crew friendly. Um, my great friend, Michael Moore being uh, certainly one of them and a, a real crew advocate. Um, so, you know, but generally speaking, a yacht is going to be stuck where it is. I think that they're going to let people home. But I think you have to be creative. I think you need to be looking at your, your courses and your add-on skills that you can do online. I think you need to um, freshen up things like, you know, the basics, uh, your CV, um, you know, maybe your yachting wardrobe. Uh, I don't know. But um, 
or look for something else to do. You know, I mean, as you know, I normally do business development. I never guessed that uh, 30 years later, I would go back to how I started in the yachting industry was as a yacht chef. But I really feel good about it. And I really feel positive and, and doing something um, proactive and that is involved in the welfare of crew. Um, and that's great. I know people that have, you know, started um, cooking for people in need. Um, I know that, uh, for instance, um, uh, you probably are familiar with my great friend, uh, Captain Marvin Wilson, that runs the Pacific Hope. Um, they are definitely extremely active um, and, in fact, um, have just announced that they're building yet another boat. Um, so that's a, that's a, a fantastic volunteering opportunity. Um, I'm also on the board of directors of Yade Global, and uh, unfortunately, we've just had another very, very a serious typhoon in the Vanuatu area. Uh, so we're responding to that, and we've had our own challenges in trying to figure out how to work with our yachts um, and keep them safe and make sure that neither the crew, the captains, nor the owners or their vessels are ever at risk, but we want to carry on doing our work. So there's a lot of challenges for everybody, and but I think the great thing is that we all share the same challenges, so maybe we can work together to try to resolve them. Um, and most of all, I, I do believe that the yachting industry um, has um, a level of, of support within its um, fans and participants and that, um, you know, hopefully we're going to get back to business before long. And um, even if it's not before then, uh, maybe we'll all have a chance to see each other on the docks uh, in Monaco or Palma or any of the other places that we all know and love. Yes, well, we're looking forward to that, and hopefully we're going to have a Palma Yacht Show this year. It keeps being put back, and a Monaco Yacht Show, of course, and you always attend those events, so it would be lovely to see you. Sounds great. Well, listen, I hope everything's going well in Palma. Thank you very much, and uh, I just want to thank you for taking your time. I know you're very busy, and you're also using your cell phone and holding your arm up, so <laughs> it's not the best comfortable <laughs> position, I'm sure. Um, so hey, well, thank listen, you, again. you know what? You know, one thing that's really funny, um, you know, had this been uh, six weeks ago, I would have said, no way am I going to get on camera without having um, been to my hairdresser and, uh, you know, and putting on some makeup or something. But boy, how those things have changed. Uh, unfortunately, I'm seeing my roots growing out. Uh, I'm seeing my bangs getting way too long and I'm dying for a pedicure. So I hope you'll forgive me for my appearance. <laughs> that's OK. I did a self cut. So we're, we're all good. <laughs> Okay. Well, listen, uh, Ria, take care of yourself. Uh, stay healthy. Uh, keep sending us news from uh, Palma and beyond. And thank you very much uh, for inviting me aboard. No, thank you so much, Norma. This has once again been Palma Yacht Crew Vlogs right here on Yachting International Radio. We thank Norma Trees coming from Pier 66 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And stay tuned for another edition right here on Yachting International Over Radio. Now.